Okay, um, uh, I didn't manage to attend uh, last week's um, class because of uh, technical issues. Uh, so, uh, it's all right. with my attendance. It's all right, Mahildin. And uh, attendance, inshallah, I will take care of it. You can just uh, start doing it from today. Is it okay? Okay, inshallah. Sure, sure. And also, you please go back and uh, uh, you can uh, learn everything from the first class because we talked about almost everything about course outline. We talked about um, the assessment and everything. Yeah. So we talked about the entire semester, what we are going to do. So luckily, everything there in the YouTube video. So I think I don't have to repeat. Okay. So you can you go me. there and uh, watch yourself. Yeah. So if you have questions, of course, please come back to me. And uh, you don't have to wait until next week, Friday, to ask questions. You know, you have my number. We are in the same group, so you can actually ask any time, any questions, any time. Yeah. No need to wait for it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So with that note, inshallah, we will be starting. Um, this is going to be the second week of this course so we are still in the uh, same slide because we are going to cover and finish this slide because it's almost 45 slides we almost uh, cover covered half of it so we are going to finish this today and then next week uh, we are going to have a different topic uh, in the sustainable development where we are going to talk about the islamic perspective so here we are going we are actually talking about the introduction to uh, <clears throat> sustainability yeah okay <clears throat> okay bismillahir rahmanir rahim nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulil karim amma ba'd uh, we discussed uh, this uh, last week last class what exactly is the development what happened in the current development uh, so we talked about the uh, three uh, aspect of sustainable development, which is actually uh, environmental issues and then uh, economic issues and then uh, social issues. Then we started talking about the environmental issues. And then I ask you about I ask you some um, some of your thought. And uh, so you were answering some of my questions like how serious is environmental issues in Malaysia. So I really appreciate your input. Now we will just uh, go to uh, the next one where we are going to talk about, uh, you know, the economic one. Yeah. So when we talk about the economy, uh, I want you to tell me, uh, you know, um, because um, uh, you can see that uh, uh, you know about Malaysian economy as, you know, uh, as a as a citizen, you have seen. So I want you to just go ahead and answer this question. How fair is Malaysian economy? All right, there are a couple of options. So you have some options like, you know, totally unfair, some of them like unfair, some of them somewhat fair, some of them very fair. It could be, you know, from you, you get you are actually reflecting what you are thinking, or you might be reflecting what your parents and your friends and your neighbors or what they are. Uh, you know, whatever that they exposed and then you actually witnessed seeing them, right? So you have seen them, how much they, 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 they either whether they are good in the good conditions or some of them may be in the bad, you know, in not in good position. So, so you have that kind of exposure you have seen. So it's okay. Go ahead and answer your question. Don't worry. It's not going to be like, you know, your name will be recorded or something. So it's okay. You can just tell me your answers. Yeah. In your screen all right please answer please choose your option you have a uh, one one minute 30 seconds Just be honest, whatever you are thinking, it's okay. No need to be like, no need to be polite or something, okay? <clears throat> okay, 40 more seconds. <clears throat> mm -hmm.
Okay, 30 more seconds. Shafika, Noor Azim, Noor Azim Hazik, <clears throat> Kafira Naziha. Yes, please provide your answers. Okay. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it. <clears throat> okay, what I can see here is actually um, uh, overall. Um, first of all, let me start from the worst. Yeah. What I mean by worst is actually no one has chosen this option, which is actually A. No one actually said very fair. I don't know why. <laughs> All right, <laughs> but of course this is totally up to you. You can answer up to you. This I, I I respect your 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 opinion. Yeah. So no one has said very fair. Very few people they said no answer. Maybe all right. You you don't want to answer it. All right. It's okay. It's up to you again. And then uh, most of them they said uh, somewhat fair. So forty seven percent of you which means that more than 10 people among you actually said somewhat fair and 28% uh, unfair, very good. What interesting is actually 10%, uh, they actually said, uh, no, I mean, sorry, totally unfair. More 15% said totally unfair, I think. So which means that actually, you know, there is a lot actually we can discuss. Uh, and uh, let me see if I can share this. Is there any options? Do you see now your result? Did I share to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you can see that the percentage and everything, right? Yes. Good. <clears throat> so this near code is very good. <laughs> okay. Let's go to the next one. <clears throat> I really uh, respect the way that you mentioned. You know, some of you mentioned uh, not fair somewhat fair you know uh, you know this is really really no one said actually very fair right? most of you said somewhat and someone some uh, half of you said actually okay so <clears throat> you see this one equality versus equity so this is where <clears throat> when we talk about when we think about the you know um uh, economic justice you know uh, we need to always you know this is what actually we are teaching in our faculty I think you also know this equality versus equity. You see, when I go and take two of my siblings to the um, shoe to buy some shoes or slippers, so I go there to buy some slippers. I'm not going to buy the same size for for both of my siblings. Am I right? That's not right. So I cannot say, okay, I bought my first sibling. I bought him the size number twenty-eight. I don't want to reduce the size for the small one because this is unfair. You know, we don't say that because the, si the similar thing goes to, you know, food and living style and everything because there's an equity, right? The same thing when it comes to uh, <clears throat> justice uh, for uh, men and women and, you know, uh, children and parents and everything is actually based on equity. This is what actually Islam talks about. But here you can see that in the first image, um, you know, they said uh, actually what uh, we want to give equal opportunities to everybody. But you look at the picture, the last person cannot see it at all because he was given the same opportunity. In the second picture, you can see that, you know, the last person actually given two boxes and, and, then, and then he actually can see like everybody. So which means that the last person requires more sources to become equal to others. So this is where actually you will see that a lot the many countries especially you know uh, my country where, from, where i'm from from india so you you will see that you know the the, the government has uh, so much fund you know the government has so much um, resources that they are offering to 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 the people who are backward they you know you know that we have this class system in india so there is a backward it's a frontward classes and everything so so they want to give more sources to the backward class people so that you know in fact uh, they are also given opportunity to uh, there is called this is what they call actually in every uh, government job so this much quota they call it yeah quota this much percentage of 
places must be given to those people. The thing is, regardless of whether they are qualified or not, whether they have a proper uh, degree or proper, you know, qualification to 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 do the job, you know, regardless of that, so they are just offering, you know, the the, the resources so that because they just want to, you know, lift them up. So this is a kind of concept, you know, most of the time is actually a socialistic kind of concept. You know, these things are going on. I'm not actually favor or are not against of these kind of things that what well, i'm just telling you this is all happening this is going on you can see that you know <clears throat> the second picture is very good example for that uh, so let's say we also have sometimes the issues like you know orang asli over here you know we actually giving them uh, more resources for education you know for government job and this and that so that we want them to come out and then you know become like everybody so this is a kind of theory this is a kind of um, what they call it um, ideology actually they are bringing up you can see that the second picture but look at the third picture this is something something amazing right you can see that the, everyone can see from their place all three can see the game without any supports or accommodations because the cause of the inequality was addressed because what exactly I know, I, 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 I understand, you know, you have to help uh, the backward people so that they can come forward, but, but the, 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 the issue is not being addressed. The, what, what caused the inequality, right? So let's say there is a group of people who go first, who, who grab everything, the group of people who apply and get everything immediately, and there are people, you know, who are not getting it. Most of the time, the kampong people don't get these kind of things, but the people in urban cities and they're getting it, and then they are given more chance. So, look at the picture. You can clearly see that if the cause been addressed, and that barrier, uh, what they call it, systemic barrier, if that barrier is been removed, then everyone can watch the game. The similar thing. This is what actually. I like, you know, when 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 Allah said, actually, you know, the, of course, there are differences in you because Allah said this, you know, um, um, uh, what is the Quranic verse? Uh, <laughs> Allah said, you know, you are different from the earth. You know, Allah said that he actually made you the khala. If he said all of you, he said, Allah said, he made all of you the Khalifa of this earth. He said, he didn't say that I made only these people. I only made this group of people, right? I didn't say that. He said, all of you, we made وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ خَلَائِفَ الْأَرْضِ We made all of you as a Khalifa. That's it. But while we are making you as a Khalifa, we also gave you differences in your nature. For example, someone is tall. Someone is short, someone is fair, someone is, you know, color, you know. So someone is actually can talk, someone cannot talk, someone, you know, the differences are there. And then sometimes someone poor, someone rich. But Allah said, you know, the reason why we made you, this is the amazing part. Allah just wants to say, who do the best work? We just want to see because if there is no differences at all, and then this is this is not going to be like you know to see the result. If there are differences, then you know it's easy to identify the result. So Allah wants to say, who do the good thing? Okay, Allah gave you this opportunity. Allah gave you a very good ability to talk. Are you talking sense or are you talking nonsense? Allah has given you an ability to play. Are you playing for fun or are you, or, or, or are you playing for a cause? Yeah, so 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 Allah wants to see Allah has given you the knowledge and wisdom whether are you using it for the welfare of the people, for the human being, or you just want to use it so that you know you can only get money and then forget about all the well-being of the people. Allah just wants to see. Allah has given us this opportunity to study in this faculty, in this kulia, in this university. And then there are other people they, they don't get the university so see look at look at it so allah wants to see allah has given us this opportunity because we want he wants to see who do good so this is what actually everybody is equal 
all right the differences are there so that you know he wants to check who do get who do good so the third the third image is a, is, is very good i like that one then uh we we are this is what the economy part we talked about environment we talked about economy the last one is social yeah so now um because of that you know inequality in economics i think there is always this racial tension still a major issue in malaysia right let us see um uh you know what you think about it so let me um um let me see what you think so please go back and then write uh, how stable is malaysian society is there any issues of racial unity among malaysian yeah so please go ahead and then give your your opinion please how stable is malaysian society is there any issues of racial unity among malaysian You can you, you can give anything that comes to your mind. It's okay because the next video is going to change a lot. So don't worry. Just give your opinion. It's all right. It's all right to give whatever your opinion is. We will make it right in the next slide. So you see, this is all kind of reflections. We just, this class is actually very, this is a kind of, you know, uh, uh, interactive class, actually. This is this is just to open up and then talk and then see what you can say. Because let's say you are, because you have the responsibility of to talk, that the doing is the next thing, but to talk, you have all the responsibility to do that because you are going to be, the representative for your family at least uh, most of the cases you will be also the representative for your compound from your city from your state and then of course from this country so you have all the right to talk all the right to express your view so please don't stop that ever ever stop that always be open always be talk Good, I like this one, the one you said. I think the Malaysian society is somewhat stable, only in few cases that there is a case involving race, but after that case, the society will go back to normal and live peacefully. Very good. Very good observation. Very good. Not really good, always have some issues. Yeah, this is also the other side. Sometimes you see the issues. There will be always social issues to a certain extent in Malaysia. Or in Malaysia. Stable with the propaganda. Ah, good. I like that one stable without propaganda from certain parties i believe malaysian at heart is not united people still identify each other according to races okay good somewhat unstable good quite stable i think yes there is some issues between races in this country but it wasn't that serious very good the issues exist depending on the areas of some age well, this is this is also very good point depending on the areas depending on the age of groups very good the Malaysian society is balanced upon fleeting tolerance where there is a majority of Malay Muslim but growing power from the Chinese community which might pose problem in the near future. Yes, that observation is very good, Mahyuddin. Okay, good. Intermediate stability and nowadays issues of racial don't rise to the top as before. Very good, mashallah. In my opinion, unstable racial start from nationalism spirit which grow too much and sometimes it will happen because of the provocator amazing amazing quite stable for me become weakest because a lot of politicians use racial issues this is perfectly very good point you know 
this is this won't become politics yeah <laughs> exactly i tell you this this is the racial politics you really want to see the full picture of the racial politics please come to india especially now back in back in back in uh, india in my place is actually you know the uh, in the april beginning of the april there is going to be the state election there is an election in my country and now you will see when i open the news you know subhanallah people like you know you know there is a there is a guy and uh, this 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 non muslim he wants to become the chief minister of the state you know he will be like um you know doing this uh, you know talk to the people in 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 open open space suddenly he 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 he, he suddenly he listen to azan because of course in india we always have masjid and then suddenly we we openly give azan like in malaysia yeah so when there is azan suddenly he stop he stop for that 2 3 minutes you know he never he don't speak big he do that that's he do that you know why he does that because he knows that the, the, the media is surrounded and then you know people are watching the news channels are watching so it's like you know he is shows that he shows that he wants to give the respect to the other race the other religion but when they come into um when they come into government when they come into into rulings you know they don't do that they 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 they, they see it differently so i'm telling you this uh, politics race is always there we, we race or religion you know they always use it thank you very much for all your uh, you know concerns and opinions and some of them mashallah really very face to face some of them also very good uh, assumption that you are having your own opinion from your place i can see that mixed which is actually good you know the truth is not actually has to be clear that clear about this kind of issues there has to be mixed opinions which is actually good so with that note let us see uh, what we have more you know someone like this one uh, irresponsible parties are exploiting racial religious matters you see this is the this is the this is the proof that what i told you earlier all right so now um let us see this video all right i think uh, some of you may have seen this video before some of you may have seen it so maybe please watch again yeah um okay i play for you all right so go ahead and watch this <laughs> Let me know if you cannot watch the video. Are you watching or mute? Can I hear the sound sir? Oh, I mute. Okay, okay. Menunda anda tentang Malaysia. Lihat kotak-kotak berwarna Perhatian, perhatian, dengar sini semua. Kepada sesiapa sahaja yang sedang berada di pavilion, mari kita bermain satu permainan untuk menguji minda anda tentang Malaysia. Lihat kotak-kotak berwarna. Itu kotak-kotak pembahagian kaum di Malaysia. Etnik Sabah Sarawak atau jika ada berbangsa Kujabi dan lain-lain. Korang boleh berdiri dalam kotak warna yang melayu di dalam kotak warna bangsa Cina dalam kotak warna dan India dalam kotak warna ini bukan nak diskriminasi ke apa tau tunggu ok soalan yang pertama siapa di sini makan nasi lemak untuk breakfast hari tadi Okey, sila kembali ke kotak-kotak anda tadi. Siapa di sini suka badminton? Tak kisahlah main ke, tengok aja ke. Okey, balik ke kotak asal. Siapa di sini yang lahir pada bulan Ogos? Soalan seterusnya. 
Siapa di sini pernah ada atau masih mempunyai kawan baik selain bangsa anda sendiri? Di sini percaya bahawa Malaysia merupakan negara yang maju dan harmoni. Siapa di sini yang baru jadi negara Malaysia? Siapa di sini boleh nyanyikan lagu negara? Okay, there is um, there is a question, right? So please, uh, what is your view on this? After your question, after your answers, and then I think uh, there will be more question. There will be the video will continue. We'll resume. Yes. <clears throat> so this is a social experiment. Just now you saw. Maybe some of you have seen it. Maybe most of you didn't see it. Um, so this is a kind of uh, very nice uh, experiment. I think they have done it. I think in pavilion or something, right? I think in Bukit Bintang pavilion. I think. Okay. Do you see the questions? Okay. What is your view on this? You you is it possible for you to answer? <clears throat> Uh, yeah what do you think about this video i mean after watching this so just write down what what is what, what comes to your mind yeah just small sentence just one just one sentence you know or one word, whatever it is. A wholesome video, very good. Unity is beautiful and we should respect everyone. Very good. It's always a peaceful country without greedy person. That's that's true. That's more than the truth. Yeah. Somewhat agree with the statement that Malaysia is a harmonious country. Yes, correct. <clears throat> the race is not something matter what we understand and respect each other. Yes, correct. <clears throat> good. Very good. Teacher. Yes. I think uh, he tries to remind people. Uh, must be uh, united yes correct that's that's yeah. the purpose of uh, you know doing this this is a real experiment you know it yeah. suddenly just happened it's not it's not actually staged this is just just happened <laughs> then they try to capture all the moments people feel unity generally but the problem is when power comes into play exactly i agree my thing yeah then we have uh, I can see the video. There is no difference among them. Yes, good, very good. I love this country. I love that Malaysia have more than one nationality so that we know each other. That's true. Very good. Very good answers. Yeah. I just share with you whatever I can. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, now let me continue the video.
it just made me realize that we are very patriotic and we unite. Dengan Cina, India, Malaysia, Kanada, Thailand. Semua Malaysia, 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 Uh, I, 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 this is what I observe, you know, for for many years staying here, because um, most of the time uh, it is possible for this country, uh, you know, because this is like heaven for everybody, because you don't see the same the similar pattern in some other country. For example, um, here Muslims majority country and then non-Muslim minority, but if you if you go and see, for example, country like India, there is a non-Muslim majority and then Muslim minority. So you you won't see the same uh, treatment like like what uh, like like here, mashallah, the non-Muslims are very peacefully they are living together with Muslims. That's because I think uh, the nature of the local people here, because the nature is important. You see, because we. Um, this is a beauty and uh, I think Allah has bestowed upon all of us because we there is no greedy in our heart most of the people there is no greedy and then um, we, we, we we take everything like you know uh, we, we live simple life and we don't actually get jealous with others most importantly we don't hate uh, there is no hatred among us so, so these are the things actually uh, making this country, you know, more peaceful. This is why uh, you you wouldn't find the, the examples like this that you know uh, different race and different religion lives in one country. You can come and see some country they they may have different religions, but they are the same race. You come you come to my place, we are the same race. Whether I'm Muslim or non-Muslim, we are the same race. The difference is only the religion. But here is different because here the race and also religion, also the language, the speaking language is different. Back in my place, we speak the same language, whether I'm a Muslim or a non-Muslim, we speak the same language. We we almost pretty much, you know, we are same, but still um, the differences are there. And But Alhamdulillah, this is, this is the thing that we need to understand. So <clears throat> here comes uh, the next uh, topic that we want to discuss, which is actually what exactly is sustainability? <clears throat> we talked about everything, the introduction, the system thinking. We talked about what exactly development in the aspect of environment, in the aspect of uh, economy, and then in the aspect of society, social. Now we are jumping into the basic concept of sustainability. Why we are actually talking about sustainability? Because this is the course, actually. We are talking about the issues in sustainability, the issues and practices. Why actually United Nations brings this concept of uh, sustainable development goal, SDG? Uh, why actually our university actually, uh, we worked hard for to get that award, like Green Gown Award that I told you last class. So there is all the there is a reason why because we actually support this concept of sustainability because this is sustainability is actually living within the certain limits of the earth capacity to maintain life or you could say understanding the interconnection among economy society and environment or you can say uh, this is the most important thing maintaining a fair distribution of resources and opportunity for this generation and the next you know. Now, I'm not living only for me. I have to live for the sake of the next generation. So what if I live in this country, in this world, in this universe, and then I exploit, I waste all the resources just for me. And then the next generation comes and they don't have the right resources. So what am I doing in this country? What When I die, am I leave something good for my upcoming generation 
So in which world I'm actually going to uh, leave my children to live? So these are the questions why actually we need to talk about sustainability. And you might be thinking, OK, if you are saying this, definitely your father also said the same thing. Your great, great, great father also said the same thing. But now you are good, right? You might be asking me that, that question because why actually now we need to talk about it because all these years human human being lived and uh, they uh, they survived. That is the truth. Yeah. How after all these years, after World War One, World War Two, we still survived. But the thing is, <clears throat> you know, um, that's a good question if you want to ask me why. The, the 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 ancestors they didn't talk about it why we are talking about it because we are talking about it because we have already started seeing the impact the impact of unsustainability you need to understand this unsustainability you see when we started using uh, you know f fossil fuel when we started using the petrol and diesel whatsoever the the when we started, um, you know, sending the gas green, you know, to the atmosphere, and then because when we started, you know, generating uh, products from from the factory, and you can clearly see that, you know, that the, the, there is there is a there is a heat going, and we are actually, it's like you know, we are we are actually, you know, creating more heat than our ancestors. First of all, of course, our population is high. You agree that we are almost more than, um, you know, seven billion people here in this world right now. Eight billion, seven billion. So, India, India alone have one point two billion, right? The the China has more than one point two billion. So now, you can see that how big is the population, and then there is a resources needed, and then we are actually trying to produce more. <laughs> Right now, it is easy for me to get a cup of coffee where I sit because I have that uh, uh, coffee sachet, and then I can put it there because behind me there is a there is a <clears throat> hot burning water, boiling water, so I can just put it there. I'm sitting here, you know, having a light on my top, and then I am sitting in under air condition room. So that applies to everybody. So now I'm using the resources <clears throat> on the cost of, you know, losing some, I mean, uh, uh, on the cost of uh, dangering some resources. You know, I, 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 now I buy my dress every week or every season, every month. <clears throat> I have more than one shoe. I have more than one slipper. I have, <clears throat> you know, everything. Now I have more. That's because the product are cheap. You know that why I'm I have more than one shoe because I can get cheap shoes the good shoes but cheap price because of the productivity because of the production <clears throat> so what happens actually uh, overall speaking uh, we actually started <clears throat> seeing things <coughs> I'm sorry I'm sorry about my cough <clears throat> we started seeing things and then um, and then we, we 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 wanted to have that so you know they used to say when children uh, eat the chocolate or chips or whatsoever they don't eat from the mouth before they eat through the mouth they already started eating through eyes do you understand my statement you know when they watch the advertisements they are already watching it and seeing it and then they wanted to have it you did that. I did that. Everybody did that. You can see that it's that the world is full of advertisement. The world is full of online supply. So you order today, tomorrow you will get it. It's that easy. It didn't happen 100 years ago. If you want to travel, it takes months to travel to one place or another place. We don't travel. There is no flight. Today we have flight. We can go. People can go everywhere. So. I think you can understand the unsustainability that we are doing right now. So that kind of thing that causing the earth a kind of heat and that's why the globe is getting warm. 
and this is what we call global warming and because of that uh, we are actually um, damaging the ozone layer the atmosphere and because of that we are actually going to get uh, the sunlight directly to that and then which is actually not good for health and then our ice the cold in this north pole what you call north pole or south pole the cold is actually getting melting that the the, 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 the is, is getting melting when the, the the cold the the ice cold bars are getting melting then the water the water level will rise and when water level will rise the, the ocean will become you know slowly rising and that will cost all the offshores so within few decades maybe like 10 20 years you will not see some islands that you are seeing today possibility is there there are so many countries like indonesia you know countries like many other philippines and you know many other countries they actually live in the island most of them most of the people and they live there and then <clears throat> there's a possibility of so this is what actually we learn today that because of our single every action because of that if we didn't understand this and if we didn't reduce our because we don't we aren't asking you to stop everything because it is difficult because we used to it what actually the idea is about the sustainability they are asking you to reduce so for example i have a dress and uh, i use it i keep it first i keep it i extend using it i don't just simply throw if there is a problem in my slipper it's 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 wide out so i don't throw rather than i find the way to stitch and then i use it this is just one example so you can you can put it there so inshallah i will be telling you how relevant this concept is in islam that 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 one is actually i kept for next week it's pretty much relevant whatever that the sustainability that they are talking they are talking today we've been discussing we've been this this became our muslims lifestyle this is our life that we've been doing this for many decades today we didn't realize it and today we have all of us having problems so now we need to talk about it so now think about it sustainability means living with certain limits of the earth capacity to maintain life or you can say understanding the interconnection among economy society and environment and then the last one is very important maintaining a fair distribution of resources and opportunity for this generation and the next so if you uh, did not um, understand the concept of sustainability then it will be very difficult for you to you know continue the whole semester you need to understand now why actually we are talking what is sustainability and why we are talking about sustainability hopefully you understood so please ask me if you have any questions any burning questions you have about them. if you if you didn't understand uh, what is this mean sustainability so please go ahead and ask me i'm here to answer you because this is fundamental question that you should understand without understanding this there is no point of you know talking about it the whole the whole the whole I, I just gave you this in very simple language simple understanding that everyone can understand yeah that's why i'm giving you the local and also the practical example right i didn't want to give you something like academic style i just want to give you something that in the practical so that you can understand okay was there any question in the chat box Oh, the one. Okay, okay. Yes. Um, thank you so much. I think there is a new student uh, who started. Okay, please go to the airport. Mm, okay. Okay. Do you have any questions before I go to the next slide? Let me also read this. Sustainable means able to maintain. Sustainable development as development that meets the needs of the present. Right. This is the most important definition. Development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to, make the, to meet their own needs. 
and advocated integration of environmental considerations into all aspects of economic and development policy in order to meet this goal. Right? This is very important because development that meets the needs of the present. So we need to find a way that actually can meet the current need. <clears throat> At the same time, we actually keep it for also the next coming upcoming future. So if we have to cut down the tree, we don't cut down everything. We keep that part of the tree so it can grow. So that kind of an example, yeah, you need to keep something so that it has to be there for the next generation. I cannot own, I cannot, in, in a way they are saying you have to be, you, I mean, in a way they are saying you have to be like, you have to be for public welfare. You ha you cannot become the selfish. This is what they are trying to make you. You cannot become the selfish. Huh? Or you have to be altruistic, they call it. So which means that you, you always think about the welfare of the people. This is actually purely Islamic. <laughs> right? Okay, that, that part, inshallah, I will I will tell you next next class, inshallah. So please ask me if you have any questions in understanding the basic concept of sustainability. <laughs> Okay, see, this is the develop, development definition. So I think the one I told you pretty much the same development that meets the needs of the present. Here I tell you sustainability is just another way of the good life. I think you remember the good life, Hayat and Tayyiba. Okay, I will keep it for the next class. They just they mentioned good life. We already have the Hayat and Tayyiba. Hmm? A high level of human well being and the high level of ecosystem well being that support it. To improve the equality of life while living with the living within the carrying capacity of ecosystem any development activity can be sustainable if it is dynamic process uh, which enables all people to realize their potential and to improve their quality of life in ways which simultaneously protect and enhance the earth's life support system okay we are going ahead. Okay, what is sustainable development? So we talked about sustainability. Now there is a development. So when it comes to development, so it is a kind of action oriented, you know, movements. That's why it is development. So you need to think about all these things, living in good life, thinking about future, systematic planning, living quality life, dynamic process, meeting the needs of future. This is all comes together when you are talking about a development. Yeah. And then again, it comes back to the circles, the three circles that I always want you to remember, environment, economic, and social. And then you can see that when these circles bringing, becoming together like Olympic rings, then actually you can see that everything like, for example, there is a sustainable economic development, there is a sustainable natural built environment, it's an equitable social environment. See, it is all merging together. And all these things, to, all these three things merging together so that you can have a sustainable development. Okay. Why, what are the relations between the three components? How to see them as one ecosystem? Just give me one simple sentence. Yeah, please. Go ahead. I give you just one minute only. Just one simple sentence. What are the relations between the three components? How to see them as one ecosystem? Mr. Riyad is there already. Have you joined the class, uh, Mr. Riyad? Ah, yes, is there uh, Riyad uh, Laibaka? 
Yes, Riyadh, uh, this is your first class that you are attending. Very good. So, so you are you are joining from which country? Are you from Riyadh? Just kidding. Oh, you are from Thailand. Eh, Thailand, Thailand, right? You said Thailand or? Okay, Thailand, yeah, correct. Okay, Thailand, yeah. Okay, good. Okay, Alhamdulillah. So we have more international students now. So I think uh, that's good for, you know, making your group. So we need uh, groups like. Uh... Oh, you cannot type your answers, uh, Mahyu, uh, Mahyuddin. Why? Is there anybody else having the same issue? You cannot type. I saw just now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Riyadh, you live in Makkah. Mashallah, mashallah. Right now, are you in Makkah, Riyadh? That's amazing. That's a, that's a very good name, actually. You, you 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 live in Makkah, mashallah. That's very good. Mashallah, mashallah. Amazing, amazing. So you are very near to Kaabatullah, you know. You can go anytime. That's very good. Good to have you on board, uh, Riyadh. Welcome you again. Huh? So uh, this is just for you only. Please, um, there is a YouTube uh, channel for this class. You need to just go there and then find the UNGS 1201. There is a video that I uploaded, uh, which about uh, about everything about this course, the course outline, and also the assessment that you're supposed to do. Yeah, everything in there, in um, in the YouTube channel and the video. The link is there in the description. So please go there and watch the entire video. Yeah, inshallah. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, I have some pretty good answers. Yeah, nice. As we live in the world, so we need to be responsible. So very good. Um, the relationship between the good and the bad quality of the environment in supporting the course of socioeconomic activity. Very good. Each system is dependent on each other. Good. The three components need to ex coexist to be an ecosystem. Good. Very good. Just, just, just right. Whatever you think, right. Mm. All the components need to be need to sustain the resources. Very good, very good, mashallah. Thank you so much. There are so many, so many um, comments, mashallah. Good. That that's the understanding that that this is what actually I wanted from you because, you know, we talk at the same time. You also can think and then just write whatever you think right. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, this is what actually. Um, um they are giving you some sort of uh, document uh, some sort of data talking about what is to be sustained for how long what is to be developed for example um when you talk about the nature when you talk about the life support when you talk about the community so there is a you know general sorry about the, the clarity of the image this is what i got um you know there is a sustainable development that is one you can see the second the other the other side uh you can see sustainable development you can see unsustainable development okay for example you see general concept you have sustainable development like slow controlled appropriate scale long term there's an unsustainable development is actually fast uncontrolled improper scale short term right the same thing goes to development strategies tourist behavior look Travel in small group is actually sustainable development. Travel in the large group is actually unsustainable. Repeated visits is sustainable, but probably unrepeated visit is not sustainable. So they, 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 they have actually giving you some idea to think about, you know, what is to be sustainable, what is not. OK, so please go through the, 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 uh, the, the 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 slides uh, because these slides are already there okay uh, this is for real and the other new people new 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 uh, new student everything i have already put in the uh, so that we are going to we are we are conducting this course 
uh, of course, from Google Meet, but our assessment and everything, our materials and all will be in Aitaalim. Later, <clears throat> your assessment, like uh, your journal writing, your quiz and your final, everything is going to be through Aitaalim, yeah? Okay, so this is the next topic. I think probably the last topic for today. We are going to talk about the key convention, declaration, agreement, and framework of sustainable development. So now you are going to we are going to talk about you know we already learned what is sustainability. We also learn um, uh, first of all we learn systematic thinking, and then we talked about sustainability, and then we talked about sustainable development. So now we are going to talk about the history okay so whatever that we discussed just now so how long this uh, talk is actually going on since when actually we become serious <laughs> that's the question i know this problem is there forever but as a people you know as a whole global people as a global citizen we only started talking about this issue starting from 1972 and before that we didn't talk about it that's because, you know, uh, there were so many um, companies that they didn't want you to talk about it, <laughs> especially like uh, fossil fuel companies. Nobody likes criticism, right? So that's the thing, you know, uh, when you go and say, OK, you are you are actually extracting petrol. Uh, I think uh, you, you know that uh, I think uh, especially the people who come from Middle East, you know that how important is extracting the petrol from the land. But that's the reason why the economy is actually booming because of the extraction from the But Is it sustainable? The answer is no, because when we take extracting those minerals from the earth and then, you know, we are causing the earth. It's like, you know, someone is actually um you know someone is actually extracting the blood from my body then what happens you know, that, that kind of thing but in a very big scale that's why now uh, big big countries like in fact even a country like even saudi they actually actually wanted to uh, divert their economy uh, from oil economy to tourism economy they are looking into some other ways that they can actually <laughs> Because now everybody talking, you know, uh, this, this this thing never happened even before. You know, last time uh, they were proud to say that this is petrol and this is petrol dollar. And you know that why U.S. dollar is actually stronger because U.S. dollar is actually petrol dollar. <clears throat> and then you know how many millions of barrels that they are extracting. And then now um, you can see that even countries like small country like Kuwait and Bahrain and Qatar have much and much more and more resources of fossil fuel and then you know they actually can supply the whole world yeah interestingly uh, the country like which has more do you know which country has more fossil fuel bank what i mean that which country has more ground uh, uh, fossil fuel any idea which can actually the country can supply for the whole world and they have they still have more which is which has not been you know extracted from the from, from the ground i think uh, swiss rock come again which country sweden. did you say what sweden yes oh no i uh, i think that's not the right answer is the country I think you know uh, almost got bankrupted the country Venezuela the, the country Venezuela in South America they have according to the report they have more petrol than any other country I mean they have the ground they, the fossil fuel extraction can be done but because of the politics because of the administrative administrative failure because of that they were not able to you know get that out so there are many other countries as well they have and then the, and then of course saudi comes next and then some even small country kuwait has more you know that kind of thing in that uh, way canada is there americas is there some other countries also is there but but now everybody since this agenda when they talked about it you see it took how many decades 
United Nations talks about in 1972. Only recently, few years before, only few years now, we are talking about, you know, um, um, sustainable energy. Now we are only talking about, you know, um, battery, electric car, electric motor, and everything. So that's why now we are talking about Tesla. And then now this guy is, you know, about the story of uh, Elon Musk. You know, he was trying to do this and then how many you know there were so many obstacles and barriers you know they, they stop him to do this because you know these people are the filthy rich people the people who owns oil companies and then they never let you do something which actually hurt their business that's why i'm saying even though we started talking about 1972 the united started talking about it only now until now you know if there is no petrol, what happened? You and me cannot even drive. But the things are changing. Maybe within a few decades in future, we will be going back to, we will be going to, uh, you know, sustainable energy. Most probably we will go into batteries and, you know, kind of solar energies and everything. So that's going to save the earth. That is what actually we talk about sustainable development. So... I just give you the history of this and in 1972 it started in the Stockholm they created UNEP then 1987 it started there in the World Commission on Environment you see that the, the, the in only in 1987 look at the time different 72 to 87 it's almost uh, 15 years Almost 15 years, you know, they didn't even talk about the environment. And then later, they talk about it. The good one is actually, uh, which actually uh, attracted most of the people is actually 1992, Rio Earth Summit published Agenda 21. This is what actually where they talk about this climate change and everything. <laughs> the next one is following 1997, Kyoto Protocol, where they talk about this uh, climate change. And then... And then they started debating whether the climate change is real or not real. And then you know that even the former president of America still didn't agree on this. You know, he said the uh, um, climate change climate change is not real, right? So this is all because of the you know because of their business will go down if it is real. If people started understanding how much we cause problem to this earth if people started knowing that you know the world is declining the world is falling then of course everybody will change their mind and then big people they didn't want the truth come outside but now no one can stop because now if something happened the next minute it is in your phone because now no one can actually uh, you know um, no one is actually can regulate the news because news is news just fresh will come to you because last time is not like that a few decades ago they only let you know what you are supposed to know if you ask my parent if you ask your parent they will tell in 60s and 70s we will we will we are not allowed to know everything we are not allowed to learn everything now we learn everything now we know everything look at the changes but there is also uh, the negative aspect, not only all the time, it is good. Don't, don't, don't think that I'm saying this because I think um, the recent uh, change is very good. There is also the other side. Khairul hmm? umuri uh, awsatuha. If you know the meaning. The, 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 the good thing, the best thing is actually to be moderate in, 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 all, the, in all the environment, in, in, all, in all time. Okay, I will talk to you about it next week, inshallah, all right? So 1992, then 1995, and then 2000, this is where they started MDG, Millennium Development Goals. So right now we have SDG in 2016. It took 15 years to achieve MDG. Once they achieved, then they started in 2016, just recently, uh, five years ago, they started SDG, Sustainable Development Goal. We have 17 goals that they introduced. I think you can see all of them at the bottom of the slide, all right? So this is the uh, uh, explanation of what exactly happened in Kyoto Protocol. 
all right you can actually read it what happened exactly they talk about the greenhouse gas emission these are the things that you know the real issue they are talking about uh, the, the 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 carbon the carbon dioxide that we are actually uh, producing of course there are <laughs> healthy carbon dioxide that 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 produced by the trees but what we are doing is actually the chemical release that we are doing from your car from your motorbike from the from from the factory from the industry uh, from polluting the river from polluting the air everything everything so many things so many things okay. so I every time i use an electricity so it's actually a it's a product of something that i have polluted it's not the sustainable electricity that i'm using maybe in future i want to do that that's why we are thinking about converting into sustainable right so they talk about it in kyoto greenhouse gas emission trading program they they call it program why because you know dealing with these companies is not that easy so they said okay we will give you some incentives if you change your a way of producing into something sustainable some of the company they agreed because they are getting uh, they are getting getting some incentive they said okay we are ready to pay you the money can you please stop stop producing in that method can you stop change can you change your way of producing because when you produce this in this way this is what happens because the the the, the because of that there is a smoke comes out and then it's actually spoil everything do you know that there are so many um there are so many uh you know uh types and uh, there are so many types of boats that was there 50 years ago is not no more there are so many other kind of uh, you know uh, living things we we don't see it because we don't know everything there are thousands and millions of them allah has created but but is actually some of them is actually already started dying it's not coming back so because of that so greenhouse gas emission that was in kyoto i think you can remember this and then johannesburg in 2002 they were talking about this is actually where um, they were talking about yeah the ocean the coast the coast and islands you know this is where actually they talk about how to safeguard the life in the water because because they came to know that even the fishes in the water is actually somehow been affected because of our product production because of our movement in the water because of the plastics that we throw do you know where it goes the plastic that we use and when we throw it goes to the ocean and i i think you have seen so many clips already many fishes are actually eating the plastic and then this plastic is is, is not is not going to be you know uh, it's going to be there like like you throw somewhere it will be the landfill it's never you know going to change the form it's going to be there forever so they talk about it in the johannesburg and then um there is also another one in climate change <clears throat> sorry uh, bali united nations climate change they started in the 2007 they talk about the you know global warming and everything then this is where they have the role of developing countries i think uh, this is something uh, something nice because <laughs> because actually i can see my country's name there ambassador das gupta of india commented for once we have something to bargain with either we address the environment together or we go down together i think this is everybody say the same thing but he actually uh what we call it uh, he rephrased it and then he put it so he became the hero all right i think this 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 idea many people they have already said you know if we don't address the problem now whether we can uh, we address now or if we don't address it we will go together down it's like you know uh, we are in the ship we are traveling in the ocean 
and then there is a two side of the ship and there is one side the people there for example the multi millionaires are there maybe if you have seen the titanic i think you remember the movie titanic so there is the upper class and lower class and then the upper class people they have all sort of you know lifestyle differences and everything that down there there is a there is a very poor people let's say there is an example like that and then there is a hole there is a hole in that particular deck like for example the last one do you think the people up there will be saying okay i have no problem because my life is up here is good is only the problem is down if he say that he is the he is the most nonsense in the world <laughs> yeah because the, the the ship will sink right because if there is a hole if you don't do anything if you don't address that hole everybody will go to the ocean the ship will be sinking so this is what actually <laughs> the idea so if we don't address together we will go down together so uh, this thing um, uh, that's why um, the, the, as i told you before the uh, development programs they actually uh, talk to developed countries you need to understand this this is the truth you have developed countries you have developing countries right so all those developed countries whether it is a european countries like germany france or america or lenda uk whatsoever and then there are developing countries like india malaysia you know indonesia everything but today they are developed countries is all because you know they have they didn't developed in sustainable manner they developed in unsustainable manner that's the reason why their life is good because they use they open factories they use people from the developing countries today you can see india and indonesia are having more foreign companies than their local companies because the foreign companies they open in the countries like in indonesia and in india because the cost is less number 2 the resources i can give you an example a car company for example let's say an european car company wants to produce design construct the car they prefer doing it in other countries you know why because to create to design to produce one car they have to use thousands and thousands of liter of water do you know this they have to use water thousands and thousands of liter just to create one car let me surprise you the jacket that you are wearing let's say you have a leather jacket let's say you have a leather jacket and you are proud to be wearing that jacket do you know how many liters of water to be wasted in order to create that leather jacket minimum 15000 liters of water can you believe this this is surprisingly true This is surprisingly true. Yes, Riyad, do you have a question? Do you have a jacket or what? <laughs> oh, okay, maybe it's a wrong signal from you. Maybe all right. So, so what I'm trying to tell that all those developed countries uh, they became developed on the cost of developing countries like Africa, like uh, subcontinent, you know, including Southeast Asia and everything. And now. when this idea came and this uh, united nation wanted to deal with trade with developing countries because developing countries only they are the key countries that actually make other countries developed and their own country is not developed because of the corruption in the country you 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 you, you, you let me give you another example you can see in america you can see in microsoft office you can see in uh, google offices you can see in nasa in so many good and you know uh, most precious uh, you know uh, uh, post and designations actually owned by indians you can see that i think uh, some of you know already they are the indians who were not able to do anything in india but they were able to do outside india huh? 
not, not to forget, you know, now, uh, do you know who is the uh, uh, deputy president of America, United Nations? Do you know who is he? Anybody knows? The vice, president, the vice president, Kamala Harris. Actually, Kamala Harris, her, her, her mother is from India. Her father is African. Her mother is Indian. <laughs> so, 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 so I, I'm just saying, and I, I didn't want to take the credit. I'm just saying, you know, so many people uh, from countries like so many experts, countries like Indonesia, many experts, they are very good in other countries, not in their own countries. <laughs> That's because of the corruption in the country. So developing countries. This is important role. That's why they, uh, they, they, they approach developing countries to, you know, uh, give them some trading so that they can reduce producing this kind of thing so that we can save the environment. So this was the idea actually still going on, but it's, ne it's not actually succeeding, but hopefully it will be succeeding. When people, when people like you, you know, understand all this and then think wisely what you should do after the graduation then only things can change if people like you and me still wants to go and work in a let's say in a in an oil company and for you for me we just need a salary but but i but if i think i don't mind working in oil company but I don't mind about the environment, but I just, what I need is actually just a salary. If I have that kind of mentality, I don't think I can bring the change. Yeah, so that's why uh, this is good. Actually, they give you this course at the beginning of your semester. See, that's why they said first year, first semester, take this course. So that actually you can create, you can become creative, you know, do something uh, which is actually good for, for, for the future. All right. So uh, then the establishment of the common principles, um, you know, in this process, common but differentiated responsibility for dealing with environment, the need to assist developing countries with finance and technology to address environment problems, the need to meet environmental development needs, trade policy measures should not constitute arbitrary and unjustifiable discrimination. So this is all actually, <clears throat> if you look at it, actually, you know, this is what actually come out. This is what actually when they do the conferences, when they you know, have some debates going on. This is what actually they they can they can come up with principles which they can actually apply into policy making. Yeah, and uh, this is what I just want to give you the thing that differences between MDG SDG is the same thing, but it's the upgrade. Today SDG is the upgrade from the MDG. In MDG they have eight goals. In uh, SDG right now we have seventeen goals. So this is a transition from MDG to SDG. Okay, I think there's a video, I think you can watch this. Yeah, still here. In the year 2000, leaders from 189 countries agreed on a vision for the new millennium. They wanted to end extreme poverty in all of its forms. So they made a list of eight goals called the Millennium Development Goals. And they wanted to achieve these goals in 15 years. One of the leading organizations working to fulfill these goals has been the United Nations Development Program, or UNDP. We're present in more than 170 countries and territories. We champion the goals so that people everywhere would know what they were and how people could do their part. We funded projects that helped fulfill the goals. We helped countries accelerate NDG progress by breaking down the silos and working across sectors. We acted as scorekeeper, helping countries to track progress. As a result, the number of people that live on less than $1.25 per day has dropped by more than half. The number of primary school age kids who don't go to school, down by almost half. The number of people getting life-saving treatment for HIV increased by over 15 times. Child mortality, down by almost half. As much progress as we've made together, there's still a lot more to do. Over 800 million people are still living on less than $1.25 a day. One in nine people on our planet goes to sleep hungry each night. Deforestation remains alarmingly high in many countries. Oceans are becoming more acidic, threatening food security and marine ecosystems. And about one of every six adults in the world 
is illiterate. Two thirds of them are women. We think those are tough numbers, and so do leaders from the countries where we work. So in September 2015, they agreed on a new set of goals to help finish the work we all started in 2000. The new goals are called the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. We have made significant progress in the last 15 years, and we think there's plenty of room for hope, for action, in the next 15 years. Today, the world is more connected by technology. We know more about how to balance the three pillars of sustainable development, social progress, economic growth, and environmental protection. However, our climate is changing. Our planet is transforming. And there are more people on Earth than ever before. We at UNDP believe everyone can have enough of what they need living within our planetary boundaries. And we are working around the world to make this happen. Our goals to reach by 2030 are to eradicate extreme poverty, protect our environment, and much more. UNDP has 50 years of experience working with countries to make this a more prosperous, healthy, inclusive, and sustainable world. Join us. All right, so that is UNDP, yeah? So United Nations Development Program, yeah? So this is what we call SDG, Sustainable Development Goals, so focus on sustainability, interconnected, global focus. And uh, this is what uh, from MDG to SDG. MDG talk about mainly for developing countries. Uh, in your SDG for everybody, because in SDG, they also wanted the developed countries to come in. Um, here, eight uh, si siloed goals. And here is actually 17 goals. Each goal has targets. So that's become 169 targets integrating three dimensions of SDG. I think you remember three dimensions of SDG, social, environmental, and then economic. This one, MDG from United Nations Secretary, this one ne ne negotiated by the member state with stronger country ownership. So these are the differences are there, means of implementation. And uh, this is through intergovernmentally negotiated program. So these are the differences are there. And then the SDG is based on these five Peace. You can see that uh, dimension of the SDG comes with people. One, there's a people, and then there's a planet, which is green. And then you have the partnership, you know, working together, cooperation, and then you have the peace, and then you have the prosperity. Prosperity could be, you know, money or happiness and everything. So based on these five P's, um, you know, people, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnership, the SDG has been designed, developed. Yeah, and then uh, this is for you. You have these 17 goals. If you didn't know, now you know. Number one, no poverty. Number two, zero hunger. Number three, good health and well being. Number four, quality education. Number five, gender equality. Number six, clean water and sanitization. Number seven, uh, affordable clean energy. Number eight, decent work and economic growth. Number nine, industry innovation and infrastructure. Number 10, reduced inequalities. Number 11, sustainable cities and communities. Number 12, responsible consumption and production. Number 13, climate action. Number 14, life below water. Number 15, life on land. Number 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions. Number 17, partnership for the goals. So I, I want you to remember all these 17. I also want you to concentrate and focus so that you can choose which one is actually that you really want to work with it. So maybe perhaps you, you every one of you may choose one and keep that in your mind so that you know you can do your assessment your journal writing based on that i want you to you know um every one of you look into that maybe tell me which one you chose maybe someone choose one someone choose the different one so that we can have the collective assessment to see all right so i think uh, this is the last slide for today so we have uh, 17 goals 169 targets and 240 indicators so we have right now almost uh, social pillars. So you can actually categorize, you can classify those 17 into four 
uh, rooms, four sections or four pillars. Under the social pillars, you have goal number one, two, three, four, five, six. Under the economic pillar, you have seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And the environmental pillar, you have 12, 13, 14, 15. The last one, inclusive development, you have number 16 and 17. So this is how you classify on 17 goals. And then you have each and every pillar has a different goals. As well, you have, also they have 50. They also have different targets. And then for each and every pillar has a different indicators, right? This is how they have designed it. Now our job is to look into it, understand it, and then after that we convert into our action, starting from our assessment uh, in writing, and then also our assessment in our action with the people that we know. All right. Hopefully we can do that throughout the semester. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, that's all from me.